guys and welcome to the family fudge I'm Jennifer and today I have another instant pot recipe to share with you today I am making corned beef and cabbage just in time for St. Patrick's Day so stay tuned Okay guys, confession time. Now I've actually owned my Instant Pot for over a year, but this is only the second time that I've used it. The first time was just a few days ago when I made hard boiled eggs into deviled eggs. And I'll go ahead and leave a link to that video down below if you'd like to check it out. But the Instant Pot made it so easy and so fast, I couldn't wait to give another recipe a try. And with St. Patrick's Day just around the corner, corned beef and cabbage is perfect. Oh yes, and one more thing before we get started. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and give this video a big thumbs up if you like corned beef and cabbage. Now let's get started. Here's what I'm using today. I'm starting with a nice big piece of corned beef. This is a corned beef round and I got it at Costco. It's a really good quality. And this is almost four pounds. I'm also using two large potatoes, one onion, a smallish head of cabbage. We don't usually go through a lot of cabbage so a small one is fine for us. And then I have a couple of carrots. And I'm also gonna be using about four cups of beef broth. Now you could also use uh, beer if you'd prefer but I prefer broth. I'm going to start by topping my onion into quarters. I'm gonna set my onions aside and get my corned beef prepared. I wanna get it out of the packaging and give it a nice rinse. I'm going to start by adding my onions to the wire rack inside my Instant Pot. And then I'm going to rest my corned beef on top of them, fatty side down. Next, I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of powdered garlic all over my meat. And I'm also going to sprinkle in the seasoning packet that came with the corned beef. And now it's time for the broth. Now, like I said, you could use beer if that's what you prefer. I'm just using four cups of beef broth. So I'm gonna get it right in there. I'm gonna go ahead and put the lid on. I'm gonna make sure to turn my vent to seal. Next, I'm going to press manual and set my timer for 90 minutes. While my corned beef is cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and prepare my carrots, my potatoes, and my cabbage. And as you can tell, I've left my carrots into pretty large sized chunks. That way I'm not left with carrot mush when I'm done cooking this. I'm gonna do the same thing with the potatoes. Now, as you can tell with the potatoes, I went ahead and left the skin on, but if you'd like to, you can totally peel your potatoes. I just decided to keep this easy and rustic. Next up is the cabbage. I'm just going to quarter it. When the time is up, I'm going to very carefully turn my vent to allow for a quick release of pressure. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and take out the corned beef and place it into a dish. I'm also gonna make sure to reserve about two cups of the broth. Next, I'm going to add in my potatoes, my carrots, and my cabbage. I'm gonna put my lid back on and turn my vent to seal. Next, I'm going to press manual and set my timer for three minutes. Next, I'm going to brush off the spices that I put on top because I don't like to eat those. And I'm also going to trim any excess fat. Next, my sweet husband helped me out here by slicing it up. And you wanna make sure to slice against the grain here. Doesn't that look delicious? Next, he's going to remove the cabbage, the potatoes, and the carrots. We like to serve this family style. Now with the two cups of broth that we reserved, we're gonna go ahead and pour it all over the meat and the vegetables just to keep them nice and moist and flavorful. Now to go along with this, I also like to serve up a big slice of Irish soda bread. Now if you've never had this, it is really very tasty. I'll go ahead and put a link to a recipe in the description box below. And of course, I like to serve this up with some Kerrygold butter. And if you like things a little bit spicy, you could also add a little bit of horseradish sauce.
Okay friends, if you enjoyed this video today, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and let me know in the comments down below what Instant Pot recipes you'd like to see in the future. Now if you'd like to see some fun St. Patrick's Day treats that you can make with your kids, you can do that by clicking on the link up here. And if you'd like to see some St. Patrick's Day themed school lunches, you can do that by clicking on the link down there. And if you'd like to subscribe, you can do that by hitting my face right over here. Thank you so much for watching. Happy St. Patrick's Day, and I will see you next time.